Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Ursula Crawford. I am the Family Resource and Engagement Coordinator with Early Childhood Cares. And Early Childhood Cares is Lane County's um, Early Childhood um, inter Intervention and Early Childhood Special Education Resource. We provide free developmental screenings and Early Childhood Special Education services for children from birth to age five throughout Lane County. Um, so if you have any developmental concerns about your child, please feel free to call our office at 541-346-2578. Areas of developmental concern could include behavior, speech and language, motor skills, gross or fine motor skills, cognitive skills, um, anything like that, feel free to call us. Again, the phone number is 541-346-2578, and all of our services are free. Um, today I have Natalia McComas. Um, she's a behavior specialist with our program, and she's going to share some information about um, supports for families that are sending their children back to in-person childcare or preschool right now during the COVID pandemic. Hi, Natalia. Welcome. Um, so Natalia, hi, Ursula. hi, you might have some lags with this video, but that's how it is with technology time. Um, Natalia has a great document. We're going to cut for of resources that we're going to look through on this video. So I'm going to pull that up on my screen for everyone to see. Um, whoop, where'd it go? Uh-oh, I lost it. That's not very helpful. <laughs> okay. There you go. I don't even know where it is. Oh, here we go. Okay, just, yeah. <laughs> okay, so back to school social emotional supports for families is this document that Natalia has. Do you want to just talk about um, some of these back to school reminders that you have here? Sure. So I just put together some things that I thought might help families um, as we start back to school with our kids doing some in person or some virtual um, services. And I know there's a lot going on for families this week in particular, um, but this is really about those return to in-person services or whatever sort of um, situation you're in. And hopefully they'll be helpful to you. I'm gonna start with just a few reminders of um, what we can focus on all together, kind of as the big picture of what really helps everything. And these come from Dr. Amy Stover. She's a doctor of psychology and presented at um, the Oregon Department of Education Summer Institute this um, year. And what she hi has highlighted just recently is for us to focus all on the fact that we are all doing the best that we can right now. A lot of crazy things are happening for us and we don't always have the choices that we want, but we do have choices about how we can make the best of this. And so just realize that we are all doing the best we're we can, both children and adults, and both parents and both teachers and everyone that's working with you. The next point that she highlights is that children look to us whether or not that we're okay. And so it's really important for us to model uh, for children the strategies that we want them to be using. And one of the ones that she points out that's so um, incredibly important Important right now is that we all recognize that there are helpers all around us and that we just have to be brave enough to ask for help and that may seem like an easy thing to do but it really can be something of a challenge for some of us and myself in particular sometimes I have a really hard time reaching out for help but once I do it can make everything so much easier and that's this what's true for both children and families when they reach out for help and when you reach out for help it can make life much easier for you and then the last thing um, that she highlights is how important kindness matters. And at Early Childhood Cares, we firmly believe that kindness is um, so essential to all the work that we do and that everyone needs an extra dose of it right now. It helps with our regulation so that we can access strategies that we need to get through all of this. 
So those are her highlights. And then what follows are some additional resources um, that uh, you may find helpful. Um, the next section are kind of more general. Um, what about resources for supporting that return? So the first one is called What Comes Next? And that highlights um, some books and strategies that you could use to help children with returning to in-person services by uh, focusing on like that routine that you create for that drop off at the child care center or the preschool that your child might be returning to. And so it gives you some uh, names of books that are uh, designed for children to support that that you might find useful. And then the next one is about communicating um, with a co-parent. And so this may be even a more challenging time than usual for doing that and some steps for um, really just kind of um, communicating in a way that's going to be supportive to uh, both your child and to yourself. And they name four things to name your feelings when you're talking to your co-parent, to describe the situation without blaming, to ask for what you want as clearly as possible. So there's no um, miscommunication or inferences about what you might want. Um, be clear about that. And then just to reflect back and check back about you know what it was that you said to make sure the person was clear about your communication. So those are included in that document. And then the next one is called All That Feels. And that one is really um, recognizing that we all are having feelings. Children are having a range of feelings from you know, more uh, kind of introverted, um, shutting down type feelings to maybe more big, explosive, kind of acting out type of feelings and ways that you can respond that would be helpful during that. And then following that is a list of books that uh, pair up with some of those feelings children might have. So you might find that book list useful. And then um, on the next page, we have back to school helpers. And those are really specific to if your child's returning, what can be helpful. First one is a communication tool that you can use with um, the teachers where your child is returning to. It helps convey what um, you have been doing at home to support your child, what your child has been focused on while they've been at home, if they've been focused on a worry about um, not going to school or not being with other other friends or someone being ill, um, you can let your teacher know that. And then there's a place for you to let your teacher know uh, what kind of communication will be best because as we're all returning back, it's really important we know how to communicate with each other and which are going to be the most effective ways to do that. The next one is a greetings board and it's greeting each other with handshakes and hugs and things that are, bring us very physically close to each other. This one helps us um, show children ways they can give greetings to their friends when they go back to school that are going to keep them a safe distance but still give them the opportunity to show that care and that interest in um, seeing their friends when they return. The next resource on this list is one that is for teaching children how to stay safe, uh, uh, safe distance from um, their peers and from others um, to um, keep safe from COVID. And it uses a lobster technique, which is a really cute way to help children um, uh, practice moving back quickly from other people or moving uh, forward away from them. And it uses the idea that lobsters move really quick forward and backwards. And then you can use little your hands as little pinchers to kind of cue them like, oh, let's do the lobster walk quickly back and forth, you know, whatever is needed. So um, there's a link to a website called Tinker Garden and it um, helps you with the explanation and it has a short video to show you how it works with children and children really seem to respond uh, very positively to this. Great. The next uh, list of resources are called Ask Resources. Oh, were you going to jump in there, Ursula? Oh, I was just going to say I think that that's, that's great. I know it's really hard for kids to recognize the um, physical boundaries. So having those kind of concrete visuals, I think will be really helpful for them. 
Yeah, it really has been. And even some parents have used it as a way to kind of help resolve some sibling um, kind of conflicts that have come up where they needed the siblings to separate from each other and they just remind them of, oh, lobster walk, you know, and kids kind of move back. And it keeps everyone kind of in a playful, um, calm response, not getting upset about it. So nice tool. Um, and then the next set of resources are mask resources. So um, in some situations, um, uh, you know, well, in all situations, children are going to have some experience of seeing people in masks, and um, there may be times when um, children uh, will be wearing masks themselves. That will be dependent on each program that you go to and also um, the communication that uh, the program has with you about it. There's information about the guidelines um, related to children. There's tips in all these resources about how to help children feel comfortable wearing the mask. There's information about um, how to help children understand emotions and um, body language um, because they can't now see uh, people's uh, mouth area for facial expressions and read information that way. So some ways that we can help support children with um, understanding um, how we're communicating with a mask on. And then some fun ways to help children engage in mask play with their toys so that it doesn't become a scary experience or um, just an unknown experience for them. They can figure out ways to put masks on their toys and kind of make it more normalized um, for them. And then that's followed with some hand washing resources. And the last item on this page is called a symptom checker, excuse me, symptom checker. And what it is, it's a visual tool um, that you could show your child to uh, get some information about how your child is feeling um, prior to going to school. Because sites may be asking you to do that um, before you leave your house to make sure your child doesn't have any of the symptoms related to COVID. And so this is just a visual way for children to be able to point to uh, how they're feeling if their throat is sore, their tummy hurts, or um, <clears throat> their head hurts. And, and so that may be useful uh, for you as well. And then the last page of uh, pages of resources are kind of more um, general about supporting children's social emotional uh, needs at this time. So uh, there are a few resources um, for helping promote calm, which we all need these days. And there are um, uh, tips that uh, just remind us in the moment of things that we can do to help children when they are getting uh, upset or even prior to getting upset, how we can kind of prevent upset by creating more calm ways for children to um, engage in the day by uh, looking at books, doing simple puzzles, listening to music, finding quiet, soft, comfy spaces to get a break away from everyone, um, kind of those types of things. And then there's one, um, there's a little story about a turtle and how to kind of think like a turtle when you get upset and what to do in terms terms of calming your body down so you don't uh, react. So that's in there. And then there's a visual for uh, promoting uh, sibling, um, positive sibling interactions. Um, it's called the Solution Tool for Sibling Conflicts. And it just gives parents some uh, picture cues that they could use with their children to, as options for solving problems between siblings. And then below that is a whole list of um, videos that are short and um, help you set up uh, the environment or give you some tips for how to respond to behaviors. And the way they're structured is that they usually present a scenario where things aren't going right. So a parent and a child engage in something that's not really going right. And then an expert, um, will come in and uh, give some information and some tips about what you can do. And then it's followed by another scenario of the parent and child uh, using those tips and um, demonstrating those in that scenario. So it gives you a nice visual as well as information. So that's what those are. And then below that, if you like reading and you prefer that, uh, there are some uh, handouts or articles that relate to how to support social emotional development for infants, toddlers, and preschoolers. 
And then there's some um, like key tips of the, what you can do to prevent challenging behavior from occurring. And then the last page has a little bit more of that, but um, it has some strategies that will promote regulation and empathy um, building for children, how to support that during this time, how to help children um, manage and control uh, kind of their big feelings. And then there's kind of some random resources that are um, topics specific to sleep, um, to coping with a loss, um, to some particular behaviors of a child, maybe um, some things around potty training. And those are all um, presented kind of in a question and answer format by very popular and very experienced um, child specialist in um, pediatrician Dr. T. Barry Brazelton, and then a psychiatrist is paired with him to answer those questions. So that may be useful as well. Um, so that covers what is in this resource. And um, we're always um, looking for parents to share with us ideas about uh, other things that would be helpful to you so that we can present that information as well. Great, thank you, Natalia. Um, I was gonna go back to the topic of mask wearing and just share that I think um, specifically that one of the things that I've found with my kids is that it's really helpful to find some masks that they like. So if you could um, have them help choose one that has patterns on it that they like or um, have them even get to decorate their own mask. Maybe if it's a paper one or something, that can be a way to make it more fun. Um, but I have found um, that, you know, as kids practice wearing the masks, that they can become really, in general, pretty accepting of it and sometimes even more so than adults. So I think, um, that's just something to keep in mind, like they can do it. So that's really an important thing to remember. And then I don't, I don't want to put you on the spot, Natalia. Can, oh yeah. yeah. No, no, but can I then? Because I just want to build on what you said that um, sometimes children are more accepting and that's really a good point to highlight because right now um, children actually really are a little bit more flexible than we are because everything's new to them so they haven't had a long experience of not wearing masks they've had a relatively short experience in their life of not wearing masks so you know it does make them a little bit more flexible yeah so i think um yeah that's great to keep in mind um one other thing I was going to jump in on was just the, the sibling conflict piece, because you brought that up. Um, I feel like that is probably a huge issue for a lot of people right now, because kids have been spending so much time with their siblings and not having like the outside outlets that they'd be used to having. Um, do you have any like pointers that would be easy to share briefly, like a couple of things that might help reduce conflict. Yeah, I, you know, the resource in this handout is just absolutely amazing because it, what it is, is it's uh, of all the strategies that you use verbally with children. So if you prompt children to share a toy or take a turn with a toy, it has a visual for that. And what happening when children are kind of in that um, conflict stage and you're trying to communicate verbally to them what you want them to do they're not really listening at that point so the picture is a really helpful tool and if you can start uh, showing the pictures kind of like during a reading time during a calm time with children and a parrot with a story like oh these two little characters are having a problem right here let's look at our solution kit and see what we could do you can give them practice so that when a conflict occurs and they have those pictures next to them they will start uh, negotiating and resolving their own conflicts. That's what I've seen over time with families using that resource. So um, it, it really is useful. And if you need help with getting it printed out, just let one of our specialists know. We'll, we're happy to do that. We know not everybody has access to a printer at home, um, but please let us know because we want to make sure we have those tools available to you. 
Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, I will post this document on our website. Um, if you go to our website at earlychildhoodcares.uoregon.edu and click on the tab that says videos, this video should be up there and I'll put that this document next to it because they go together so, so well. So um, please check that out and thank you all for joining us today. Take care. Bye.